Hi guys, welcome back to Irish Funny Vlogs with a special video for you today. It's the League of Ireland prediction show for the season of 2024. We've got Ushin, Finn Harps fan on, we've got uh, Gavin Woods, Cork City fan, and Keith Ryan Bray fan. They're going to take you through it. We'll see you soon. Welcome back to Irish Funny Vlogs. We're back for another season, 2024, on Irish Funny Vlogs. Delighted to be joined by Cork City's finest and Bray's finest as well. Uh, Keith and Gavin Woods have joined us for the first show of 2024 for the uh, first division. How are you getting on, lads? Hi, Dodge. Hi, Keith. All good. How's it going, guys? Good stuff. Good yeah. stuff. Good, good, good. We're back for another season. Plenty of content planned for, for the 2024 season. So, yeah, no, we'll, we'll, we'll just have take a brief look at the actual league um, as we head into the start ahead next week uh, and so on. So, uh, it's uh, it'll be a few questions will be asked about uh, you know, the team that came down from last year and so on in Cork City. Will they be able to? To bounce back up, it's probably really hard to tell. Um, you know, what you know, it's really anyone's guess, really. I mean, you have UCD came down as well, they lost the playoff and so on. And you'd probably think them two teams will be kind of best equipped to finish top two, but then again, you wouldn't know with other teams and so on. And the likes of Cove, who had a, a strong season last year, they'll be looking to to uh to continue that, you know. And then you have you know, different wee signings here and there that. Uh, teams have kind of picked up and so on, and you know the likes of Bray probably have lost some experience and experience heads. They they signed some some new players, and you know they they could be there and about. Um, overall, lads, where do you kind of see uh the league this year? Kind of just as a brief kind of uh to kick us off there. We'll go with you first, Gavin. What do you think will be as strong as last year, or what do you think? I suppose, uh, being honest, Osh, you know. I suppose it, it's, you know, we're hoping, <laughs> like, I'm as well be honest about it, but, you know, obviously because, you know, we're lucky enough to spend last year or, or unfortunately enough to spend last year in the Premier Division. So, you know, my, I was only kind of tipped down around the first division and see what was going on. So, um, like I said, I suppose, look about Cork City themselves, it, it was exactly what they deserved for, for the season coming, you know, um, you know, and, it, as I said, they never built on when they got promoted two years ago. Um, so and 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 to be honest, they're exactly where they need to be. They need to start again. It's like a reset again, you know, new manager, new players, you know, new people involved in the background. So um it's gonna be an interesting season for us down here, you know. Yeah, very good. Yeah, it's a full rebuild there. The new man Tom Clancy in there, and you've you brought in some good players with Jack Doherty and, and Greg Greg Bulger there to name a few. Uh like yourself, uh, Keith and so on. How do you think Bray are fixed and so on? And you know, your neighbours kind of Wexford down there too. They possibly have a half decent season. What do you think yourself? Yeah, uh looking at it from, from my perspective, I think I, I can't see past Cork to be honest. I think I think they've signed well from across the water. Um and it's I think they'll be. I think they'll be champions. Uh, you can have any guess from extra Bray Harps used to be for playoff. Um, I've seen Bray twice preseason. We played Shelburne last week and Leicester this year. Now, in all fairness, it was, it was Shelburne's under twenty team. Um, but two 0 win, you, you you still have to beat what's in front of you. Um, uh, Christian Magerson and, and and Shane Griffin, who who both signed uh, preseason for us, scored the goal. So. I'm hoping for for big things from from Griffin. Uh, he was obviously Waterford last season, and yeah. they got promoted. Markson came from Longford, so um, he kind of switched places with Chris Lyon. So, um, if he can stay fit, hopefully he can get 15, 15 goals for us in the league, and um, which will put us there thereabouts. You know, um, yeah, it's we played Evergreen in the last Cup first round, um, first game in the group stage and like it was nil all draw it was, it was typical first game of the season pre-season you know and yeah. um, but um deep down I think I think everyone's just gonna be chasing Cork um I think I think Tim Clancy's a great great signing as a manager um I mean he won the league a couple of years ago with Drada so uh, yeah everyone's gonna be chasing Cork so um we'll you know if you if you get any type of result against Cork in your three games against them it'll be a bonus and um, um, you're just looking to beat everyone, everyone else in the league. Yeah, bring it on, bring it on. Hey, we're, we're set for, for a decent wee league now. So, yeah, so let's get cracking on then, lads. We're going to go from 10 to first, um, and we're just going to get the two lads' uh, predictions in each team and so on, and we'll just have a wee chat about each team. So, we'll kick it off. 10th place, Keith, who are you going for? Um, fortunately, um, I'm going with Kerry again. I, I went with them last season. Um, 
you know, they're it's 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 hard to understand uh, who they've signed, what they've signed. I mean, Billy Denny has gone, um, and they brought brought in Conor McCarthy as as, as first team coach. So, um, look, last season it was a bonus for them really to get into the League of Ireland, but this season they need to build on it. But I don't think that their squad possesses enough quality for them to actually progress in the league. A couple of other teams have lost players, but um. I think Kerry will be uh, whipping boys again. Unfortunately for them. Yeah, that's it. They're just the, the only the solitary one 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 win of the of the season last year. I I feel like they left a lot of points behind them. You know, I mean, if if I was predicting as well, I would put them down there. Like they they have brought in a few players, as you say, but they're probably not as strong. You know, well they've they managed to keep you know I think it's like eight or nine of their squad from last year. The likes of Arnold Sullivan there and. Daniel Daniel Coote, Brosnan and Gleason and so on and Lee Axworthy and so on. So they've brought kind of some they've kind of kept some of their players. Uh, but uh as you say, like it's it's tough whenever they're kind of starting, you know, obviously last year was their first season. So I, I'd say I you know, I hope for them anyway. Just you know I suppose I suppose O'Shane, the big thing is that the owner has left for the dock as well. Yeah. So there won't be as much money going in there. And I know the season kicks off next week, but um yeah, yeah it's uh, it'll be it'll be a very, very tough season with Kerry. Yeah. And uh, on the Gav, obviously, they've lost Leo, Leo Zaka as well. They're going away there. So that was kind of their probably key player from last year. So uh, I assume you're in the same court as Gav or, or, or as Keith. Sorry, I, I, am I right? Yeah, I, like I think, to be honest, and like again, it's like it kind of echoing what Keith said, you know, it's with no disrespect to him, like, but, you know, I suppose they're only kind of, it'll probably take them, you know, it's probably it could take them three or four years before they kind of, you know, really come into their own when it comes to the first division, you know. I think, I suppose, look, last year was a learning curve from, you know, just coming into the league itself. And, like, to be honest, which is, you said, like, you know, Billy Denny, he gone, you know, the owner gone, you know, that's 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 tough going. So, I suppose the most important thing for them, you know, is just to try and get as much results as they can at home because, you know, like the likes of, you know, going up to, coming up to City or going up to Finn Harps or coming up to Bray, like, you know, they'll... I suppose for them, a draw up at any of these grounds will be like a win from you know. With all due respect to them, like so, you know, I can't see anything. Uh, you know, I think they will be unfortunately. I think they'll be bottom of the league for the season coming. Yeah, I think I think it's more about kind of narrowing that gap between themselves and kind of ninth place. Obviously, there was I think it was like twenty seven points or something last year. There was a gap between themselves and and Harps and so on. So yeah, on the ninth, Keith, uh, who do you think? Um, it could be a few, a few down in this kind of category, you know. And I'm not gonna say Bray now, but uh, go ahead. Uh, I, I've gone for Cove. I think uh, okay. Shane Keegan is going to be a big, big loss for them this season. Um, he obviously had been playing so well last year, and uh, um, you know, Cove on the best of days is a tough place to go, but he had them tough to be. Um, you know, they they've lost Charlie Lyons. Uh. To Cork City, so that's a that's a big blow for them. But look, they've 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 managed to hand uh, hang on to Jason Abbott and Brendan Frow and Dale Holland. So, um, kind of the nucleus of last season squad is still there, but um, I just can't. I think Shane Higgin had such an influence on that team that I, uh, I don't know. I don't know where Cove are going to go this season. Like it's it's tough because after they were they'd obviously be looking for progression this year, but. Um, like that was a bolt out of the blue when he when he announced his departure. Um, and yeah, I think Cove are going to finish just just not just ahead of Kerry, but they'll be they'll be in ninth. Um, they'll be a good few points ahead of Kerry, but they they won't go any further. I don't think. Fair enough. Yeah, they have they have lost a lot of a lot of players there, as you mentioned, the Red Charlie Lions and so on. Lee Stacey's also gone to Shamrock Rovers there. Um, yeah, uh, yeah. What are your thoughts yourself? Uh, they really brought in what you know what I like. Uh, yeah, yeah. I was thinking like the, exactly the same as Keith, and that's not a lie. I'm saying, you know, I think I, I think as well, you know, Shane Keegan was well respected as well in the dressing room. He was liked as a person as well, and I think he brought the best out of the squad as well. Obviously, the likes of you know Jack Doherty gone to City, Wilson Wawero gone. Like the two of them up front, Wawero was winning a lot of you know first ball and taking it down for Doherty, like you know. That that was a lot of where their goals were coming from. That link play was excellent with the lads, and obviously they like, you know, they were so solid at the back with lines and Frahill at centre half. But you know, obviously we've lines now, and you know they've 
you know, I I just like it's kind of it, it's funny. Like you can have all the systems and you know all the play in the world you want, but I think when it comes to man management, I think you know if that's good at a club, it, it like it's like if it adds adds points onto your you you know yourself, it adds points onto the team when it comes to the league. So yeah. I can't. I I unfortunately I can I don't want it to happen, but I can see him struggling. And the fact as well that they're playing their first, I don't know, they're playing the first four games or something in Turner's Cross. So, like, because their ground is the, like the ground isn't ready yet in Coleman's Park, so like that will probably won't do many favors either, you know. Yeah. So you know. Yeah. Uh, fair enough. Yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll we'll see what happens with that one there. Uh, on to uh, eighth place. Uh, who are you thinking there? Keith? Uh, who have I gone for? Three United. Um, I think again, Osh, they've lost a bit of experience in uh, Mark Ludden has obviously hung up his boots. Um, player you know um, well as well you know um, look they've they've managed to hang on to Ender Curran who done particularly well for them last season scored a, a good number of goals they brought in Yo-Yo Maddy um, if they can click um, Maddy didn't really have a great second half of the season with us last season um, personally when he came on board for us I thought oh great this guy this guy will score goals for us but just just didn't click for him. Yeah. Um, if him, if him and Curran can 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 manage to to find a partnership there, um, they'll be further up the league. But uh, they're going to be eight for me. I just I I just can't see you know going back to their first season in the league, fantastic, you know, and things have just slowly, gradually got a little bit worse. Um, I'm not sure if the treaty fans are a little bit worried, but um. Yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be a dogfight between them and Cole for eight months. Yeah, they've, they've lost you know a lot of their players kind of the mainstays of the team last year. Dean George, one of them, you know, Sean Gearan's there too, and you know, obviously, um, success. Uh, Eddie Gunner, he was obviously uh, a key player, you know, uh, as part of their their their, their uh, forward line last year. So like you know, they haven't really kind of brought in, you know, uh, as you think kind of uh replacements and so on. Uh, yourself, Gav, do you in the same? Is that yeah, like, you know, I suppose City played them in the FA Cup the season gone, and at the time City weren't doing well, and they beat them two 0 down there. So, you know, I think I think you know when you're like when you're losing to a, a City team that were poor at the time, it probably kind of says a lot, really. Like you know, and um, but yeah, like as I said, like um, you know, keeping in the current anyway, and if he can get goals from look, it'll be a huge plus from. But if, um, as I said, like a, a poor City last year that weren't. We're on a bad run and they beat him 2 0 down there. So, you know, obviously, you know, things aren't, you know, they'll they'll probably struggle a bit as well this year. Yeah, fair enough. You know, you're probably right there. Uh and uh, into seventh place. Um it's probably a toss up here, probably between maybe Harps or maybe maybe Longford Town. Uh what are you thinking, Keith? Brave? Um I've got I've actually gone for Longford. Hmm. Um it was a toss up between Longford and Atlanta, to be honest. Okay. Um the benefit that Longford have the season if they they've signed a big squad. There's a lot of players signed there, and um, the bet the what may go against them is trying to keep every every player happy. And mm-hmm. um, look, they've signed players that know the league. Uh, uh, Connor Crowley has come in from Bray. Uh, Chris Lyons has, as I said, swapped with Chris Chris Magerson. Um Bastian Heary, uh, player you know as well. Um, kind of. You know he blows hot and cold, but on his day he can be one of the better players in the league. Um, I already mentioned Dean George from from uh, Treaty, and um, Adam Wicks said as well knows the league, so they have some some top players there. But they again they just need, need for for those players to click. Um, do you know what I think goes against Longford? And you know, Bray's Bray's attendance isn't great as such or whatever, but. Looking at Longford last season, the crowds just weren't getting in the gate, and it's hard. It's hard for teams to 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 up their game when there's maybe three, four hundred in the ground, not a thousand or whatever, you know. So, um, the the locals need to get behind Longford Town, I think. Um, Saturday night, you know, you know, it's it's a night out for, for a lot of people, but um, you know, Stephen Henderson's a shrewd character, so uh. We'll see, but the, I mean, they had a 7 0 defeat to, to Shelburne in, in the Leicester City Cup uh, or the a friendly the other day. So um, that's a big loss, you know. Um, I know Shells are a Premier side, but, you know, 
But Longford <laughs> won't like that going yeah. into a new season, you know. Yeah, it's not, it's not good. Not good for the conference at all. You know, as you mentioned there, they've obviously brought on a few players that kind of, as you said, know the league, which 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 will be good. No, that's that's fair enough. Uh, Gav, what are you thinking there? Yeah, like I suppose. Look, the only way I can say it is, you know, actually saying what Keith was on about, like the ground. You know, when City played them there up there, you know, two seasons ago, and it, it like it's look, it looks like a like a fantastic stadium. Like, and I remember watching the game that, and they were saying, "There's not really a big crowd there." You know, and they had a fine stand, and I was saying to myself, like a Saturday night. You know, for most people, as as Keith said, I know it's a night out, but you know, you're thinking to yourself, like you know, half seven quarter day kick off, head to head to head to your local team and support them, and head out for a couple of pints afterwards on a Saturday night, which is. You know, it's nice to go on a Saturday and as well and a, a great way to get out with, you know, and support your local team. And that's what surprised me. I remember at the time, I think Longford were on a run. They were, on, you know, they were after winning three or four games in a row. And City obviously were up there, but still it was going to be a tough place to go at that time. And I remember saying to myself, like, you would have thought that there'd have been a, a bigger support for my home. So I suppose, you know, if they can get a crowd and look, they'll probably be hard to beat then at home. Like, you know, and... You know, Stephen Henderson's been there and done that, so he's he's well experienced and like I share that same, yeah. Uh, Victor said the rank too, yeah, yeah. As, and if he's, yeah, he, but, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. He looked, he looked, he looked good. I was impressed with him last year. So you know, if he's still with him, he's a he's a nice player to have, like you know. Yeah. Well, he, he's he's resigned there, yeah. And I think it also boils yeah. down to the actual location. As you're saying about the half seven and so on, like you know how far kind of away from the actual town, kind uh, of the ground is, like you know what I if you had the ground, say, close to the town, you'd, you'd definitely get a few, you kind of, you know, that probably, you know, yeah. you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, now, moving on to just outside the playoffs, sixth spot, Um, who, who are you going to go with there? It could be a toss-up between Bray, Harps, that loan, you know, who are you thinking there? Uh, we'll go with you first, Keith. Um, I've gone for Longford survivals at loan. Um, what's going to be massive for them is, the, they've obviously lost France uh, Piro to Drada. Yeah. Um, they're going to have to replace his goals. There's no doubt about it. Um, but Atlanta are so unpredictable. Every season in the league, they sign these almost nobodies. And then, like France Piro, who knew about him before he came yeah. into the world? You know. Um, so if they can get a gem like that, um, they're they'd be laughing and they they'll have no pro- problems getting the playoff. Um. They, they hung on to, again, players that are pretty good in a le- the League of Ireland First Division, like Aaron Conley, Dylan Hans, Dan McKenna, who's had a relatively good um, good career in the League of Ireland, who's with Bray, who's with Shells, and now he's with Athlone. So, um, but I think it all boils down, they have to replace the goals that Piro uh, is going to take away, um, but they will just finish outside the playoffs. Fair enough, yeah. Uh, that's a, that's a fair point. Yeah, that was a, a that was a, a lot of their a lot of their goals. They, they, they uh, last year they brought in you know, they kept some of their players off. They kept Endam and August all involved there, and yeah, Matthew Lean, Daniel McKenna, and so on. So yeah, no, you're probably right. I wonder wonder who's going to be the gem this year. They've they've actually uh so the or they've actually uh, brought in a few players from uh B or a player from BD Olympic and uh Guelph United. You know, so I'm not even sure where them teams are to be honest, but. <laughs> um, you could be a, could be a gem in one of them. Uh, what are you thinking, Gavin? Yeah, like uh, Pearl, I suppose we like I, you know, I was keeping a close eye on him last year because I was saying to myself, you know, for City this season, I said obviously losing Rory Keating, and I was saying, geez, the, the, you know, he would be the player to get, you know, making such a difference that loan last year. Yeah. You know, I was saying he big, strong, powerful guy, and you know, he was scoring against the big teams as well, so uh, he's a huge loss to them, and. Um, you know, but I think obviously you're trying to replace how many goals that Pura got last year. They get over twenty goals possibly. Mm-hmm. So that's a like that's a huge that's a huge loss, like, you know. But he's like the ideal replacement for him. So, yeah. you know, for Drahada, it's it's a huge coup for Drahada. Like he's yeah. um, you know, I think he'll be able to he'll be he'll be good up in the Premier, you know. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, no, it'll be it'll be it'll be interesting to see how he figures out. So into the playoffs, yeah. the top five, who are we going for, Keith? Number five, five or fifth place there. Um, I'll just shout out to Ronan Mc- McCarthy from Wexford. There, um, it doesn't look like Lennon is signed back for, or uh, he does the bits and pieces on on, on Twitter. Um, the players that have left, but it doesn't look like he's signed back. Um, who have we gone with? Um, your 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 crowd. Right. 
Mike Cruyff. <laughs> Lovely. Mike Cruyff. Johnny Gall Celtic. <laughs> Look, it's Darren Murphy's first full season. Um, you know, so it'll be. It, look, it's going to be tough. You know, I mean, the, what what gives Finn Harps a bit of a bit of a, a, that benefits them is like not a lot of teams like going to Valley Buffet, um, and at the best of the time, the pitch can be. Take if it rains, you know yourself. Oh, sh- like it's it's a bit of a it's a bit of a mud bat. Um, mm-hmm. They hung on to Ryan Flood, who had a decent season last season. So, but you know, it, as he's, you've already said it a couple of times, it's a toss up between any any team yeah. teams to finish in the top top five apart from Cork who win it. But yeah. um, I think has to be fifth. I mean, but what a tough place to go. I, I used to hate going to Valley Buffet and. Um, I still Good. do because it's 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 an awful trip, um, and uh, and if, if you get it on a bad day, um, that benefits Finn Harps. Um, yeah. I don't know why because every both teams have the same level of you know, but um, yeah, fifth fifth for me, for yeah. Finn Harps. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. I also the, the last season just like <laughs> probably the worst season in years. Like, but there was a wee bit glimmers, glimmers of hope. But as you mentioned there, Ryan Flood was was kind of that glimmer of hope. You know, um, yeah, it'll be interesting to see kind of what way uh Murphy kind of approaches the job. Obviously, you know, will he go back to the way that Horgan was, or kind of will he try and play and so on? It could be a, a bit of both. Like you know, as you said, I think keeping of Ryan Flood and obviously bringing in success there. You know, to be. Hopefully there's a bit of a, a link up play there and so on, and you know, hopefully a, a few more goals and so on could be the difference between getting the playoff spot and avoiding, you know. So uh yeah, Gal, what do you think? Yeah, actually, I was just talking about it and we were talking about Valley Buffet, but I was talking to somebody recently, we we're talking about the League of Ireland, and you know, they were saying like, you know, the first division and what do I think and all that, like, you know, and they said to me, Have you ever been up there? Which I haven't, you know, and they said to me, like, you know, that was that was the thing as Keith just said, like they were like oh my god I hate going up there you know it, it's funny so obviously it's across the board teams just don't like going up there or, you know whatever it is about it so it's kind of like a cauldron going up there you know what I mean so obviously yeah. that's a that's a huge plus to yourselves us, yeah, you yeah. know so you know I haven't been up there so hopefully I'll make the trip, trip up there this season anyway like you know yeah. I'll try, I'll try, I'll try and get up in June when hopefully uh, yeah. up there it'll be, it'll be dry that day. Exactly, well, you, wouldn't, you wouldn't know June can be like an yeah. as well. You wouldn't yeah, know. yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've got a, day, I've got a nice day. I'll just dry up here today. <laughs> so, yeah. You know. uh, yeah, no, that's fair enough. I know, it'll be interesting to see how they get on. They've also brought in uh, David Colley as well. Uh, speaking of my, my kind of position, I, I would be hopeful of the playoffs as well. Just, you know, hopefully kind of a more kind of Settled squad, obviously they have a lot of players on their contract there from last year and so on, and they kind of kept the bulk of the squad. So here's hoping anyway for a playoffs. I don't think we'll go up now, but definitely, definitely, hopefully for the, play- for the playoffs. Uh into a uh, fourth position. Uh Keith, who do you think? I think really, uh, a, a dark horse on this throw out there. I think Wexford could be a dark horse really uh, this year. But really, really kind of oh, a good idea about them. To be honest, I think they just went like a, like a lot of their business without any fuss really. So what do you, what do you think of her that? Um, four position and going UCD. Right. Um, but who knows? Who knows about UCD? I mean, they again, they could have gems coming through their their, their um their college system. Um, big signer for them is obviously Ronan Finn. Uh, who's gone back there? Uh, to kind of, I, I think he's studying in the college as well. There's some sort of masters or something going on. Um, they obviously hung on. They uh, they have Sean Brennan as well. So, um. It's so hard to discuss UCD. You know, yeah. they can be one of the best footballing teams in the league, or they could be, they could just end up being just with week on week on week. You know, but look, they've they've been up and down, and they've been they've won two playoffs in the last three years against them um, sides that were expected to beat them. Um, so you know, you never know, but you know, it's a. Uh, it's it's tough on you today. You don't really have the crowds, um, but if they can if they can get one or two um, players, they've obviously lost Evan Sam has gone has gone to uh, to Bray and stuff and, and a few others. So um, if they can if they can get a couple of the decent footballers coming up uh, through the college, um, as I said, who knows? 
Yeah, that's it. Yeah, yeah they've lost Jack Keeney there as well, who was a kind of a captain figure for them over the last past few years, working Healy as well. Goalkeeper's gone to Shelburne and so on. So, uh, yeah. yeah, definitely some key kind of outs there. Uh, Gav, what do you think of that? Do you agree with Keith? Do you? Yeah, Ronan, like Ronan Finn's a huge, like, he's what a player to bring in experience is and all that. Like, but, you know, again, it's 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 one of these grounds, isn't it, where you kind of, you know, it's kind of like going to a park or something to watch a local game. You know, it's that sort of a ground where you could have. You know, there could be nobody there, or, you know, or yeah. away to any any team that have a good away following will go there to bump up the crowd, you know. So, like, you, you can't write UCD off in that sense, you know, as Keith said, you know, they could, they'll be tough to beat anyway. And, yeah. like, you know, Cork City last year when they played them, like, you know, it was, you know, it was, it was tough against them. So, like, like, the thing with them, I suppose, that, that probably goes in their favour is that, you know, Kind of, I suppose, in, in the in the public sense, they're going. I'm sure, it's only UCD, you know. But like, you know, they've been there, done that, plenty of experience, yeah. and uh, you know, they like, you know, they could, they could, they could be top of the league too. You know, you just never know with them. Yeah, uh, that's that's fair. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see where, where they where they do finish out. There, as you as you mentioned, attendance isn't isn't you know a massive part of UCD. You know, it's a, a, a it's more mostly kind of families and so on. There's obviously a few yeah. fans that will go and so on. So yeah, no, that doesn't really come into. But as you said, there, there could be a few gems coming through as as you see McCollum Wheeling there a few years ago and so on. Um, yeah, on to third. We're getting down to the last three now. Uh, Keith, your thoughts? Yeah, I've gone with I've gone with Bray here. Um, I think uh, look, it was a, it was a terrible season last season. And and Ian Ryan has has admitted that that thing just didn't go right. Um, go a few injuries. Um, the worry I have for Bray is that squad wise, it looks a bit like if if our first eleven um, were to pick up an injury or two, um, you know, replacing those players. But there are some young players coming through. Uh, the likes of Thomas Morgan, um, and we signed we signed young Cruz, Karen Cruz from from John Crowbers and Freddie Turley as well. So. Um, the big one for me, and I, I think Gavin spoke about this guy a couple of years ago as well, Killian Cantwell. Um, yeah. I think he's a fantastic signing. Um, oh, it was with Harps as well, yeah. So, again, he's a player that's been there and he's done that. He was obviously with Bray a few years ago. And um, hopefully hopefully he stays injury-free. He's captain this season. So, you know, if he, if he can... If he can kind of come up with a, a pretty good partnership with it with Cole... I'm a home run. Um, we'll we'll be hard to break down, but um, Bray and and I'd be happy with her to be honest with you. I think I think the other two that we're going to talk about are, are a little bit ahead of us. But uh, if we can get a playoff spot, take our chances in the playoffs. Fantastic. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah, they, they was obviously resigned resigned a lot of the players from last year. You know, Moharu and Broom and uh, Thompson and so on. So there's you know the majority of the kind of team is there. Obviously Max Murphy's there. Obviously former Sherlock Rovers and so on. So yeah, though Mac Magnuson's also come in as well from Longford Town. Um, you'd agree with that, would you, Gav? Or? No, I never agree with Keith. <laughs> 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 no, look, you know it, it'd be great for Bray as well. You know it'd be great for him to to finish up there. And I suppose, um, am I right in saying this is Ian Ryan's second full season as manager? Am I right or am I wrong? No. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so like, you know, you're kind of, you know, you've obviously been your first season, then you're going into your second season. So you, you learn as you go along, I think, and having a full second season there as well as, you know, things are a bit more settled and, you know, hopefully the prayer, the players that he's brought in said Lee Cantwell even a couple of years ago, I remember him being excellent. So, yeah, yeah. you know, if, if, if Bray can, I suppose, make, you know, make the, make the home games try and be, get as much points as they can at home, you know, anything is possible. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, that's, that's I know it's just there's there's a bit of a better buzz around the club. Yeah, um, you'd hope Jersey. so. Aren't they? You know, huh? you'd hope so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah well, absolutely. <laughs> um, New Jersey, New Crest. You know, so lovely, actually. Uh, lovely. Yeah, lovely. It's lovely, George. Lovely Jersey. I saw it online. Yeah, yeah. it's lovely. Nice and warm. Um, yeah. Yeah. So it's, apart from when we play for Harps, uh, I think both of our away jerseys are. Light blue, dark blue, so <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 fair enough. Yeah, good stuff. So, that leads us down to our last two, uh, obviously Wexford and Cork. So, uh, do you, you obviously think Cork's gonna win the league? Both of you think that 
Um, no bias there from Gab, of course, but no, that's fair enough. I didn't say anything. Uh, yeah, <laughs> he didn't say anything. But uh, Wexford, I they all say uh, they they've uh, you know, I I said already, I think they're they're kind of they could potential, you know, uh, challenge Cork. To be honest, I think the the, the team that are gonna they're gonna do that. Uh, your thoughts on that there, Keith? Um, yeah, I've um. I, I, I'm I'm privy to a better two. So I, I backed Wexford to win the league without Cork City. So um, um I think I think hanging on to Aaron Dobbs again crucial for them. Um Thomas Alua had a decent season, you know, if he can if he can chip in with a few goals. Um they've obviously brought in Mikey Rowe as well. Um Ethan Boyle they've hung on to. Ethan Boyle, fantastic player, um and, and holds the back line together. Aaron Robinson um and they've Alex Moody back as well from Bray and goal. So yeah. they've they've a decent they've a decent old, old team down there again if yeah. they can hang on to their first eleven without any injuries. Um they'll be definitely close closest team to Cork City, I think. Uh I mean it's fantastic to see as well. We're sure the crowds are kind of getting behind them as well. So um it'd be a tough place to go very carry it always is, but um they'll definitely be close to Cork City. Yeah, that's it. They've obviously Alou was there too, and I think it's the first season in a, in a long, long time that Danny Fernand's no longer involved. He's retired, and Hugh Douglas actually as well. He's gone, and with them retired, but they've also brought in Mike Euro. He had a decent season with Galway uh, towards the back end of the, the campaign as well, which is a good signing. So, yeah, as I said, already, they're, they've went, I think they've kind of gone on notice, well, apart from us, but I, I don't know, I haven't heard much buzz about them. Uh, Gav, you, you think they'll, they'll challenge? Yeah, them? like, my, like uh, Dobbs is a great player. Louis, like, I've, you know, from two years ago, they've been good players. Like, Mikey Rowe done very well at Cove towards the second half of last season when, when Shane Keegan got him in. He was a good addition, so yeah. he'll be a huge addition to Wexford. And, like, even I went down to, you know, we played him two years ago down there, and I think we won it 1-0 at the time, you know, and it was just... You know, a really hard place to get a result. You know, you're coming out of it with three points, saying that's a big three points. You know, it was about getting the points as opposed to performance. So, um, yeah, and look, it, you know, it's a it's a nice ground, nice kind of a local ground, and it's, it's a funny old ground, ground to go into. You know, coming in off the main road and the way it's situated and stuff like that. But you know, um, it's it's oh, you're like I watched it on the telly night being there, tough place to go, and like you know, getting three points down there actually. You know, is not being condescending. Is the big three points to get there? They're they're a hard team to play against. You know, yeah, so, yeah, so that, that that's really it there, lads. Um, it'll be it'll be a tough old season, I'd say, uh, for a lot of clubs. Um, struggling down in the first division, but uh, I don't think I think they mentioned Ushin Ushin and yeah. Sean Marie for Cork. Gavin, I don't know if you know about him, but Sean Marie. I don't. Want... He's going to be a top top player for Cork yeah. this season, I think. And obviously Jack Darty um, this season. He's he. And I don't know if Greg Bojo has got the captaincy or not, but what a player! No, King uh, Co- King Coleman, Coleman, King yeah, Coleman. Yeah. They still have Derek Crowley all there, and Bardsley still there, and you know, yeah, Gary Goffey and Kia Murphy. They're they're also also key key uh, key resignings there. So yeah, no, no, Sean Murray's definitely as you mentioned there, Keith, very 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 good. Now Charlie Lyons as well, and also and so on. So mm. yeah, no, I'd say they'll be the they'll be the team to beat. You could say. Um, Last question for you, lads. Uh, Keith will put up on the on the screen uh, the predictions. But uh, last question for you, is, um, do you think this league, uh, the league this year, will be stronger than last? Keith will go at you. Overall? Yeah. Premier M first? Uh, I'll go first, just. Um, look, QCD have come down, so in terms of attendance, it might be a bit of a drop, you know, with Galway going up and stuff like that. But, uh, It'll be a little bit higher than it was last season. I think Galway ran away with last season. And Gavin? Yeah, I suppose, look, you know, I'm hoping that, you know, that we get off to a good start next week. I mean, no matter what, like, obviously, we've carry at home next Friday night, but, yeah. like, the most important thing is pick up the three points. We need to start well because I think if we if we can get a couple of wins under our belt or have good results, or I think the most important thing, like I've always said it about Cork City, is that, you know, when there's fans going out there, they want to. They, all they want is the fellas to kind of run through a wall from. If they put in a good performance, you know, f- fans will come out to watch Cork City. You know, yeah. it's that type of a club where if a fella puts in a shift and puts in 110, percent they'll get the crowds. And um, I, I think, being honest, which uh, you know, I think it's very good for the first division that Cork City are going back down. Now they deservedly 
they deserve to be down there. Simple as that. But I think it's a great boost for the first division, especially, especially losing Galway and Waterford because, you know, obviously they had the crowds and stuff. So there you have it. 2024 season awaits us. Soon cut us off. So apologies. This is why we're finishing off with the outro. But let us know your predictions in the comments from 1 to 10 in the comments below. And uh, drop a like on the video. Subscribe as well if you're new around here. And uh, yeah, we'll see you right back here on Irish League Vlogs for more uh, League of Ireland First Division coverage throughout the year. Chat to you very, very soon. Good luck.